Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee. And today I'm going to show you how I made this very nice table of contents that is almost entirely formatted and generated automatically by the table of contents feature in InDesign and how to use styles in order to automate even things like these chapter 12, 13, and 11 on the outside, how to automate putting an M dash into this part, and uh, how to make sure all of your page numbers look nice too. All right, so first things first, when you have a highly styled table of contents like this, a lot of times you just kind of end up copying out and building it by hand and then running through the whole book and checking the page numbers and making sure you have them all right because it's too much trouble to let InDesign automate this, or so we think. The first thing is you must have a consistently styled book. Right now we are in the front matter of the book, so here's nothing here except for the title page, copyright page, and table of contents. Let's flip over to our book file. In my book file, I have been very consistent and careful with my styles. Take for example, this style is called chapter underscore title. These are also separate styles. I have a section title for my sections. I have a part title for the parts. And these are chapter number styles. As you can see over here in my paragraph styles tab, everything has a style. You can only automatically generate a nice table of contents if everything in your book has been applied a style. Otherwise, this will not work. Everything even down to the questions at the end of the chapters. See, even this has a style. So now that we've established that we have a consistently well-formatted and styled book, let's go back to our front matter. Let's start on a new page and just completely regenerate this table of contents. Start on a new fresh page right here. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is make a new text box for our table of contents to go into. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the table of contents section of InDesign. You can find this under layout, table of contents, and here we can see the table of contents that I already have set up and saved for this particular book. But let's start over with a new one. So let's go ahead and reset everything. Gonna remove all of these. Gonna deselect all of these. And now we're looking pretty basic. So I do want the title of my contents to say contents. Yeah, I could change this to make it say table of contents. This is what will appear in the text above the table of contents. So the first thing we're going to do is add in the paragraph styles that we want to target. For my book, that is going to be the section let me think the section number for or part number first. Part just the title. I need the title. So I'm going to add this. This is going to be on level one. If I click through these options, you can scoot the indent in or out to let InDesign know what the hierarchy is of these particular titles. The next thing I need to target is the chapter number. I'm going to add this in. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't need the chapter number because I'm going to style this later. So I'm gonna remove the chapter number. I'm going to add the chapter title, which is now level two. And then I'm also going to add the H2. This is now level three. I believe this is all I need, but I can come in and edit this later, so it should work out just fine. Just in case, I'm going to add this insight question in as well to make sure it step comes in, but I want it to be on the same level as the H2, so that will go there under level three. 
If we leave things at default, we will be given the option to leave the entry as the same style. I don't want this to happen, definitely not, because the part title is a very large style and I want it to be styled for the table of contents, not for the content of the book. I already have some table of contents paragraph styles made up. I'm not going to go necessarily into the basics of how I made these. Um, I'm assuming you know how to make a paragraph style at this point if you have styled your whole book. So the insight question, I want this to be the table of contents body. I also want the H2 to be the same table of contents body. The chapter title is going to be under the table of contents H4. And then the part title is the TOC H3, I believe. Now, we don't want the page number to appear for the part titles, and we don't we don't want just a tab character in between the entry and the number. We want instead for that uh, page number to end up all the way on the right hand side of the page. To do this, you insert what is called a right indent tab, which is indicated by a caret and a Y. So I'm going to change this caret T over to a caret Y for each one of these. And I want the style, the character style of that page number to be called TOC page numbers. I'll go into what all of these are later, uh, but for now I'm just going to apply them. This part is important at the bottom. So we do indeed want to create PDF bookmarks just in case we ever export this file as a PDF. Um, I do not want to replace the existing table of contents because I don't want to modify this for later. Um, I still need to use this file this week. So if you are doing this for your own file starting afresh, do indeed click this one. I'm going to include the book documents. This is important. I definitely want to make a text anchor in the source paragraph. This is very important for ebooks. I do want to remove the forced line breaks. What this means is if you had a title where you needed to break the title down from one line into two lines, it will get rid of that. Um, and I do include the text on hidden layers, although I don't think it makes a big difference. Okay, now I'm going to save this style. Before you click OK, make sure you save it because this will save you a lot of time in the future, especially if you're making an ebook. So I'm going to save this as TOCHMY2. Now I have two different styles saved for this particular book. I'm going to click OK. And now that table of contents that I have made is generated and placed on my cursor. InDesign has now run through and found where all of these page numbers aligned with their uh, corresponding paragraph styles. I realize now that I do not want these giant page numbers to exist um, <laughs> after the chapter names. I want these to be the same as these ones. So how do we fix it? We're going to go back again to our layout, table of contents. We're editing the TOCHMY2. And I'm going to make sure that that um, insight question has a style of TOC page numbers on both the the right indent character and the number itself going to make sure the TOC has that and that the chapter title has that. That's why it looks so big. It was just taking whatever style it came to first. I'm going to click Save Style. OK. Overwrite it. Yes. OK. Now when we regenerate this again, perfect. There we go. Now it has updated that style. Let me show you how I made all of these particular uh, styles for everything else. So this style is the table of contents H4. Let's look at that paragraph style. So what I did was I used the numbering feature under bullets and numbering. And what I did was I told InDesign that I wanted to use, yes, a regular numbering format. Now typically what you will see in uh, InDesign's 
numbering feature is this right here. You will see just the number and a T with a little dot at the front, such as this. Oh, apologies. It is a carrot. And then sometimes you'll see a dot right there like this. So this is often how you see your numbers displayed by default. A carrot and a number, or a pound symbol, this indicates the number as it counts up. Then a period and another carrot T to indicate the tab um, in between the in between the number and the content. So this is generally how you see this happen. Um, I also have the mode continuing from the previous number, otherwise it will just keep repeating one, 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 one over and over again. I want it to continue. Um, so let's talk about how I got the word chapter in there. So you can actually type anything in this little box that you want. So if I type chapter in all caps and then click out of the box to let it reset. We can see now that it says chapter two, three, four, whatever. If I want to add a space character into here, first of all, I'm going to get rid of that dot. I don't want it anymore. To add a space, all I need to do is to place a space character after chapter just like this. Now we have InDesign automatically running through and using the word chapter, applying a space, and then adding a number as it counts up, then a tab character. I have edited my tabs over here under this indicator. I can slide these uh, up or down to get things as I like them. If I can touch it. There we go. All right. You may need to mess with this for a while until you get things the way you like it. Sometimes it's easier to come back over here and do it on this tab as well. Like I know I want my first line indent to be zero. For this instance, I have used my tabs in such a manner that I have the uh, first line indent here and the left tab here, and then I have a a left justified tab to indicate where I would like this line to line up, which is right here. All right, now I can click OK. The introduction, I don't necessarily want to be chapter one. It isn't chapter one. So for this, um, I tell chapter one manually to uh, remove the numbering from it. So I go up to type and then I go to bulleted number list and remove the numbers from chapter one. Now it is simply introduction and I'm going to add another tab character to move it back to this location. Um, for some reason, these have been applied a character style of something else other than normal. They have taken on a bold style. So I'm going to quickly run over these with uh, the fine change and reduce them to a style of none rather than bold. So to do this, I'm going to use Control F, open up my grep finder, and I'm going to search for character styles of bold. And I'm going to change them to a character style of none. And I'm going to indicate that I want to do this only for my selection. Better get more pages on here first. Let's run our table of contents over to the next page. Wow, it's long. All right. So let's highlight all of this and then tell it to do only the selection. I'm going to tell it to change all. There we are. Now we can see all of these. I'm also going to tell it to do a 
changer for bold italic. So you have a couple of those as well. Change all. There we go. You can see even that InDesign will bring in the superscript numbers, which is really cool. All right, so now that we've gotten this far, I'm going to also remove the chapter numbers from these by going to type and numbered list and remove numbers and adding the tab spaces into here. Oops. All right. Now let's talk about how I added this in dash into this paragraph style. We're going to open up the paragraph style for it. And let's go look again at our numbering options. So very similar as to the last time. However, um, I made a new list style because remember we are using numbering that starts from the last numbering list, right? So you, what would happen is this part would become part of this list. So it would have said part 14 and then chapter 15 and so on and so forth. You don't want these lists to become combined. So you make a new list entirely. You can do this by selecting new list and just assigning a name to it. Um, this one is called the parts list. I have this one formatted as a uh, Roman numerals list. This part right here indicates the Roman numeral. And then I inserted an M dash by using Alt 0151. That is an M dash. If you wanted to add an N dash, you could do Alt 0150. That is an N dash. You can see these indicated as such. And you could do this with anything. You could add a colon, you could add semicolon, whatever you wanted. Just a space, whatever. So that's fine. Um, then InDesign will come right in and add that content in after it because this is technically considered a numbered list. So other than a little bit of manual adjusting here and there, you should be able to update the numbers for this automatically just by going up to layout and then update table of contents. Every time that your book reflows or changes pages, you should be able to go to update table of contents and then the uh, InDesign will automatically come through here and update all of those page numbers for you. This is also an excellent option for eBooks because now this has been generated live and all these page numbers are indeed accurate and you don't have to worry about going through and manually writing them all in. All right, guys, I hope this helps. I will see you in the next video. Go ahead and like and subscribe, and bye-bye.